Channel of Choice, Africa Independent Television, AIT. The program is People, Politics, and Power, where we dig deep to help build nationhood. My name is Okiri Agbonsu Remy. The agitation for self-determination by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, remains in the front burner of national discourse. The situation, as you are now aware, is that the Southeast Governance Forum have proscribed IPOB why the Nigerian army has categorized the organization as a terrorist group. The implication of this categorization is far-reaching. What does the law say about who should be regarded as a terrorist? Because we have a law in charge of that uh, determination. Do the Southeast governors have the rights and the powers to prescribe a body? To prescribe a body? Then to the main actor in all these, Nabdi Kanu. Where did he get it all wrong? Did he take it too far? Is there hope for reprieve? These are the issues we shall be interrogating and looking at in this edition of People, Politics and Power. I have with me in the studio a former cabinet minister, precisely the minister of aviation in the Good Luck Jonathan's administration. And uh, he was also the core marshal of the Federal Road Safety Commission. He is Osita Chidoka. He is also uh, a candidate of the United People's Party in the just uh, around the corner Anambra State Governorship elections uh, scheduled for November 18. Before we come to him and begin to interrogate some of the issues, we have let's uh, listen to reactions from the happenings in the southeast region of Nigeria. It's always good if the leader of iPod been able to abide by court decision. We will not have this problem. I know Nandi was before Justice uh, her Lordship Justice Motala Yako. That court was not Motala Yako. That court was court of Nigeria. And if they have given a ruling, a judgment. We should abide by it. Whether you are an Igbo leader, I see some of Igbo leaders making, some of them are lawyers, making reckless statements. First of all, you could have abide by what the court has said and go back. That was a court of record. And go back to the appellant court, which will be sitting five people. There was a very heavy issue. The, the five people will sit and decide whether her lordship, Mrs. Yako, was right or wrong. First of all, they will not be where we are today. We need to get back. Yes, if you say we are marginalized, every section of the country is marginalized. Our own brothers who serve us or marginalize us because they refuse to work. If leaders take the people as their own people, we will not talk about marginalization. So telling me about the military, the military is right to do military exercise. Nobody can challenge the military not to do. They are doing Operation Dolly in the north. They are doing a Lafayette Dolly in the north. They are doing another operation I can't remember in the west. They are doing operation in Middle Bay. They are doing all kinds of operation. That keeps the competent nature of our uh, state. Remember, when I was governor, which most of you were journalists then also there, the police, the army used to do a joint patrol because of this kidnapping, armed robbery, and etc. The Igbos should stop boxing themselves to a corner. The way forward is for people agitating for Biafra to stop and talk about what will be good for us, what will benefit every Nigerian, every Igbo man. Igbos are the most traveled. If you go to Brinan Kebi, after the aborigines, the next people you see, they are Igbos. If you go to Kavanchan, after the aborigines, the next people you see, they are Igbos. If you go to Shobo, after the aborigines, the next people you see are Igbos. Country needs stability. Country needs a way forward. Country needs sincerity of purpose. Country do not need. Our past, our leaders, they, they have damaged this country so much because they, they are ruling the country with hatred. A country is not ruled by hatred. It's in the lips of everybody. People are asking for restructuring. Some people feel that they are not getting enough from the federal government. You know, people, Nigeria should come to a round table and talk it over so that we, we are all one. 
you know, once all these things are sorted out, I'm sure there is nobody that wouldn't want to live in a, a peaceful atmosphere. Today it is Nam de Kalo because I believe that the issue of a Biafra is a spiritual thing. You understand? After all, I'm, I'm not sure that Nnamdi witnessed the, the civil war. You understand? But he he was born and he read things through the papers and uh, he saw the need, you know, for self determination. So even if he is destroyed today or if they chase him away somebody tomorrow will also come up so let us solve this issue once and for all let us come together and say yes all uh, oh, oh, things are passed away new ones are now come we sit down we talk we decide the way forward for this country in a conference table and tell us our, 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 tell ourselves the home truth you know, whatever the North East we get, we give it to them. Whatever the North West we give, uh, uh, deserves, we give it to them. What Central we give, South East we give, South West we give, South South we give. And we sit, we sit down. After that, we start implementing. Honestly, with this, everybody will be happy. Well, there's so many sides of, uh, of course, when you have uh, a situation that the kind that we have in Nigeria today, where almost every part of the country is agitating for one thing or the other and crying, the cry of marginalization is almost all over the place. It calls for uh, the best of minds, particularly those in government, to fashion out how to go about it. It calls for the best of attitude towards it, particularly from government. And it calls for the best uh, statecraft on how to maneuver Nigeria out of what is uh, there and uh, move forward to the location where Nigeria can move on. And the question is, do we have the wherewithal? Without, do we have the expertise? Do we have the patience? Do we have those in, leader, in the leadership position who can take it off uh, the heat of Nigeria and move us forward? My guest is Osita Chidoka. Osita Chidoka is uh, a former cabinet minister, precisely uh, former minister of aviation. He was also the co-marshal of the Federal Road Safety Commission, and currently he is uh, angling to become the governor of Anambra State under the auspices, under the umbrella of UPP. Thank you so much for joining me on the program. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, in a nutshell, how do you read the situation that is on ground now? Well, first, um, I think that um, we have to celebrate what is right with Nigeria, and then we will talk about what is wrong with Nigeria. Um, in the last few years, I thought Nigeria had turned a major corner by the reforms of the last administration in changing the content and the character of our electoral system that made it possible for an opposition party to win. I thought Nigeria has proven that our democracy has come to stay. Uh, we have moved from party to party, Obasanjo to Yaradua. Then we had a president who died and we had almost constitutional crisis on our hands. We sorted it out. And then we had an election that a man from the minority part of the country became president. Then we had an election that an opposition party won. Um, so I thought that Nigeria can celebrate what is right with it, which is that if we do what is right and good, the country will benefit in the long run. Now, we can't continue and stay back at that point where we are. So we have made the progress in our democratic experience. We've made progress in our economic experience. We have seen our country grow um, economically. We have seen us being talked about as one of the largest economies in sub-Saharan Africa. But all that is tied up to one issue, that in the issue of Nigeria, we need to promote the issue of the rights of all Nigerians to freely subscribe to the idea of Nigeria. Nigeria was a British creation. It was a convenience creation by the British. Nigeria at independence, we fought for independence as a collective, as a group, with three powerful regions. And we have moved to civil war, to um, multi-states, now to 36 states. I think there is need for us to come back to the table and determine for us and for the next generation, what are the fundamental principles that underpin Nigerian citizenship? If you become a Nigerian, if you subscribe to the Nigerian identity, what are your expectations? Our constitution tried in chapter two of the constitution
to list out what they feel is the guided the fundamental objectives and directive principle of the state, which is non-justiciable, but which, based on which we can make laws to make it justiciable. Now, the point is that we're at a point in Nigeria where, starting from our democratic experience, we've gone through many experiences that challenge the Nigerian state. And at every point in time, the Nigerian government have reacted the same way. In 2010, if the police had not killed Yusuf of the Boko Haram sect, or if those that had killed him had been brought out to justice and tried, maybe we would not have gone the route we went. How again now we are confronted with agitation? And people say to me, what do the Igbos want? Now, now we, when we take a look at, even before uh, the military came on, I would even dare say before the independence of 1960, and what you talk about Nigeria, which was a convenient creation of the, uh, the colonial masters for their business, for their enterprise. Mm. Some of our politicians in the early days also talked about Nigeria as a main ge ge geographic uh, expression, which needed to be, de we needed to uh, have a rebate. Yes. We needed to have ourselves believe and subscribe to Nigeria the way we took it out from the military. Where, where did things go wrong? Where did the things go wrong that up to today we are still talking about an Igbo man, uh, a Hausa man, we are talking about Fulani, we are talking about those things without, we have not really been able to move ourselves, even though we have this uh, local identity that we should have, but we have not really been able to take on Nigeria as a nation in our minds, in our hearts, and in, our, in what we do. Because Nigeria has not offered anything that will make us subsume our individual identities, the sub-identities, the national identity. General Guwan started off well by thinking about federal government colleges, thinking about National Youth Service Corps, thinking about things that will bring us together. But if you look at today, we were in this country at an election crisis, some youth coppers were killed in this country. Nobody was arrested for that killing. Nobody was tried for that killing. There are institutions which should hold sacred and sacrosanct in Nigeria because they were designed to form the Nigerian identity. We shouldn't negate those institutions. And being able to form a Nigerian identity requires all of us to find out what is the fundamental principle of Nigeria. So the Americans talk about the holding this truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The French talk about egalité, egalité fraternité. The British talks about the Magna Carta. What is it that makes it that once I subsume my Nigerian identity, my local identity to the Nigerian state, this is what I get in return? And that is why I fundamentally believe that nobody should be afraid of Nigeria's unity. What Nigeria needs is a discussion, a renegotiation, a rebirth, a, a reason for existence. We can't exist for the purpose of federal allocation. Because one day, the OU will to finish. So our meeting where we're being Nigerians cannot be tied to the monthly federal allocation in Abuja. It has to be tied that once you carry a Nigerian citizenship, there are things that accrue to you. You cannot have unity and have division at the same time. Once we have formed a Nigerian identity, then if I live in Kanu, I should be a Kanu indigenous. You cannot stay in Kanu and talk about my state of origin. My origin is Nigeria. I cannot have dual um, citizenship in Nigeria. You cannot say to me, you have to leave this place on this date, because what is happening is that we are keeping our old primordial identities and not subscribing to a new identity. Now, to be able to move to that new identity, I think there is urgent and persistent need. It didn't start with this government, but this government is at a historic moment. Yeah. It's at a moment when challenged by the Boko Haram crisis in the Northwest, challenged by the Niger Delta militants in the South-South, challenged by the Biafran agitation in the South. The whole have got to there is the need for the country to take a look and say, let's take a minute. And I'll give you an example. When General Babangida came to power, he saw that the economy was not working. He's, he met low oil prices. Then oil was hovering around $14 per barrel from an oil high of 182. What did he do? He structurally adjusted the country. He divested the federal government of all their concerns, the banks, the industries, and then liberalized the economy. One of the greatest adjustments we've done to this country was under General Babangida through the privatization program.
Now, another opportunity has come for a government to structurally adjust the, the federal political, government. The political, the political system. Adjustment. Yes. And we don't even need, if this government had come and engaged, or any government for that matter, engaged in a process to say, what and what and what should the federal government do today to give more feeling of um, inclusiveness to the rest of the country. Ownership. Of Ownership of the process. That is what we deserve. The discussion is not about Nigeria's unity. The discussion is not about separation. The discussion Those things is are taken for granted. They are taken for granted. The discussion we should be having in Nigeria today is how do we make every Nigerian feel a sense of ownership? And I, I will say this. The fact that the Scottish people are asking for exit from the United Kingdom shows you that it is not a matter of infrastructure. So anybody who says it's poverty or rich, the, the Scottish are okay in the UK. Their economy is not doing badly. But they still want a sense of identity. And after a very long, long time, of, time association. of association. The fact that 156 years after America fought wars on racial issues, that race is still an issue in America, tells you that there is something about the human being an identity. And at every point in time, every government has a responsibility to make sure that all identities in Nigeria are given equal treatment. Now, let, let, let's take a look at the approach to so some of them. We saw... The late uh, president, president uh, Yaradu of blessed memory takes some steps at a critical moment when some persons would have thought, look, let them go to hell, bomb all of them out. He said, no. He took, he took a kind of decision that brought Nigeria out of the loud agitation that was coming from Nigeria at the time. Until today, it is a huge benefit if we have to count the cost of what has happened in Nigeria data, the training that, that has gone on, those who have dropped the gun and a lot of other things. Now, I would just oppose it with the uh, Ken Sarawiwa execution, yes. which threw up a lot of things and escalated the tension in that same uh, region. You have already cited uh, the Yusuf that was uh, uh, summarily executed over the Boko Haram uh, issues at the early stage of his, uh, you know, uh, operations. Now, are we going down the same road again? I mean, specifically, are we going down this same road again with IPOB? Now, now the Kalu are here. Some people are saying they don't know where he is. Some say they know where he is. We have people who have uh, been who are not seeing their injuries as a result of the onslaught of them by the military. Mm -hmm. Who are whose anger have gone double now? If I if I if I get them get it correctly, are we going down this road again? Well, I think it's um, the handling the IPOB crisis has been poorly managed, and the poverty of the of the solutions being offered is because Nigeria as a country um, has still not yet thought about the idea of running the country on evidence. Um, a government has the way with her to even get third-party agencies to conduct an opinion poll, to check the thermometer of a people, not only in, in the southeast, the northwest, the northeast. How are people feeling in this country? Because this are, these are the people we yes, are talking about. these are about. the people. These are people that voted for us. What do they feel? If you follow the NOI polls, in, they publish regularly about the president's um, rating in the country, it is very instructive how divided the country is in the opinion about the performance of the government. So I believe that the government ought to have, first of all, tried to understand what are the underlying issues that is giving room to agitation. Are they not aware? Do we really need to, I mean, well, do we really need you, to carry out... You may not have the, evidence. The, the, you may not have evidence. You may know. We may guess, but we need to have evidence. If the governors of the Southeast have woken up and said to themselves, go to your state, conduct town hall meetings, talk to your people, find come out back what and they, say, find, find what out. are they saying that we are not saying that now the camera is saying that their people are listening to. Because what you need to know at every point in time is that you can't have a, an agitation without a, a feeling of discontent. There must be a feeling that he's tapping into. That feeling is what we need to get back to and redirect it either to the political process or redirect it by solving some of the issues that are, the people are complaining about. So it is important that we look at this matter in a historical way. And that historical way is that go around the world and look at every place that's had separatist um, agitation. It never goes away. Every time something goes back in the country, people that are 
people use it that. Wakes up, it wakes, wakes up. They wake wakes up. It up. So what you need to do, whether you go to Quebec, whether you go to Catalonia, whether you go to the Southern Sudan that eventually got independence or Eritrea, separatist ideas are not founded on logic. There's an emotional connection to the issue of identity. So you need to find a way to, to connect to, to that emotion and make it and redirect it to the Nigerian state. Now, every time you negate that feeling, every time you say things like, no, then anybody who says this, Nigeria's unity is non-negotiable, then it means that you don't understand the idea of unity. Once there is unity, then there is no argument about ne negotiable or not. In fact, the fact uh, that it is not negotiable means that there is a problem. In fact, the, the one, of the, one, one of the popular wise saying is that he who uh, 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 f fires the first uh, short is saying I have lost out on ideas. Absolutely. And uh, if you, it means you do not have any other thing to do other than the. <laughs> 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 but if you have ideas, you will not fire. You will not yes. fire the first shot. Now, if you take a look at uh, the reactions recently, the, many Nigerians have said, "Look, what what is uh, the meaning of prescription? I mean, do you just wake up and say you are prescribed? Do you prescribe an idea mm. again?" Maybe we should begin from the IPOB idea itself. Mm. The Nam the Kanu has an idea. We have had, like you said, at the agitation and separatist uh, movement all all over the world. The divis the divisiveness that this was creating, the militancy, I quote, that it was creating. We will burn Nigeria up. The promises that were following uh, the, the the agitation and the mobilization that was going on, the setting up of certain groups of security and uh, uniform people who were now going about trying to create an identity for themselves. Is that one, is it, is it the one that a sovereign state can even quickly tolerate and just allow it to fester and they will not take any, take any action? Never. Um, I'm of the considered view that Namdi was on bail from a court. He had bail conditions attached to him. Yes. He has violated those bail conditions. Obviously The government so. will go back to that court and take the necessary action because they are a state. They may even make an application to that court. I don't know how that process works to so bring the case further down and say this is in violation of the bail conditions or we have new charges against so him. And then you file those charges. In fact, if they have gone ahead to say, no, there are new issues. This guy have done A, B, C, D. You are invited to the police. Of, in the course yes, of enjoying, in the, course of enjoying yeah. the bail. Police is inviting you to come. Once he goes to the police station, they take him in. A sovereign state must behave like a sovereign state. If he constitutes himself as an opposition or he constitutes himself as a nuisance to public behavior, the state should respond. But why we voted for democracy in Nigeria is that we voted because we want the rule of law. We want laws to guide us and not sentiments. Well, let, let, let me just take you in there because we have to do some comparison. And we must not as, have these talks in isolation of the circumstances surrounding uh, Nadikalu openly flouting the bail conditions and mm. the government agencies appearing apparently helpless in doing nothing about it. Yes. The silence or the inability of uh, the police or the security agencies to pick up uh, uh, Namdi Kalu in op open violation of the bail. Did it just happen in isolation? Remember that there was a declaration by a group in the north that says all Igbos should go. They have rescinded that. They have said, okay, we, have, we are no more pursuing that cause. But they addressed the press several times. And nobody was arrested. Yes. Nobody was picked up. And the feeling was that the security agencies found themselves, boxed themselves into a corner where they couldn't go and arrest uh, Nandi Kalu because there was this violation that was here. Now, do we, do we have... Uh, do we have people thinking in government? I mean, uh, are we just running the government like on autopilot? autopilot? Some, some people have suggested that it does, it, does, it does appear that nobody is thinking. Well, I, um, I responded to your direct questions on the issue of NAMDI and IPOB. I'm saying that the government, which is the originator and the purveyor of the law, has not obeyed its own laws, have not followed its own laws. Now, when you come to the issue of the Ariwa youths and, their, and the reaction of the government, it goes back again to the issues as I'm raising, the fundamental issues of are there superior identities in Nigeria? If there is an identity that IPOB has flouted by making incendiary um, comments about the country, please follow the law. 
try them if you have them and jail them if they've committed an offense that requires jail time. But if the Ariwa youths have also done the same, please do the same. Because that is what you do in a country to show that this is the law. It's neither. That is one of the reasons why President Yeradua was respected, because he kept standing on the rule of law. What does the law say? So if you want to stand on what the law says, my attitude is that the government ought to have followed its own process. Police will have issued an invitation. You are in violation of an invitation by a police. Then you can take an action to enforce the law. Yeah. But when you haven't done any of these, and you decide that the next important thing to do is a military operation inside the house of Ndam Bikano, then I think that is a flagrant abuse of our legal procedures and process in this country. Now, in, in your own words, how do you really describe IPOB? I mean, I know many people will say, where well, is a group, they want, uh, they are fr a group of frustrated young people who believe that uh, the Nigerian state is not fair to them or to the, the, the region they belong and that they, are, they have shouted over the years, nobody listened, so gradually they have, their frustration has taken them uh, to the wall, like the dog that is being chased. If you chase the dog, it will run for you for as long as there's the road, but if it gets to a wall, it will turn against you. Is that the situation with the IPOB? Well, I don't know. I don't know the modus operandi of the IPOB. I do not know how they plan to achieve their end. All I know is that I have argued with both the people I have met and Igbo people who have sympathies for the IPOB that there is a legal constitutional process for agitation in Nigeria. We must exhaust it. You must go through that process before you can talk about a failure. So I want to see evidence that that process has been followed. That is why democracy is attractive to all of us. That is why we are supporting the democratic process. So now, many of them argue that the country is already fundamentally skewed against the Southeast, that no matter what we say, we are going nowhere. My argument is, let's say it first. Let's, let's follow the process. Let's follow the process first. When we get to the end of the road of that process, then we can think about how to get the world and every other person to hear what our issues Not are. Not a question of running so, on a mindset. No, you can't run on a mindset. We have to follow that process first. And that is why I believe that my duty is to interpret that to the young people in Igbo land, that there is a process, there is a procedure in the country. We need to follow it first. Now, some people say that the 1999 constitution is ab initio illegal and should not be the basis of any further conversation. But we don't have any other. That's the point. And my point <laughs> is this, that the 1999 constitution, imperfect as it is, you can equate it with even the American Declaration of Independence, that after he talked about very beautiful things, including the, the equality of all men are created equal. As they were saying that blacks were slaves in America, yes. many of the people in the room were slave owners. But it was on the basis of that declaration that the blacks came up with the civil rights movement that made it possible for blacks to start voting in America and, get and for a black man to get a president. So it is on the basis of this imperfect constitution that we can build our desire to remodel Nigeria, to rethink Nigeria, and to renew the idea of Nigeria. And if we cannot do it, I want to say that if we cannot do that, then we are setting up ourselves for greater problems in the future. We have in a historic moment, a historic junction, the, go the economy is in a bad shape, there is political tension in the country, this is the time for us to sit back again and take some action about making sure that all groups in Nigeria, all areas in Nigeria feel a sense of ownership in the Nigerian project. Now, let, let, let's, let's take it, let's look, look deep in the intellectual angle to look at the fears of those who don't believe that we should sit down for a structure. The fears are that the fragmentation, the deep-seated uh, inclination towards uh, ethnic, the ethnic nationalities is so much that if you make a pronouncement, then you are invariably tearing this country apart. Some in government circles have bought this, they have swallowed it, and that is why some say, look, don't even call for a negotiation, because if you call for a negotiation, it's an, uh, 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 it will be a foregone conclusion that Nigeria will break up. Is there anything that holds strong in that argument? Well, the whites in South Africa said that if there was any time independence, apartheid is stopped, the blacks in South Africa will kill all the whites. The whites in America always argue that if you stop slave trade and slavery in Africa, they will overwhelm us and they will destroy us. At no time in the world has any set of privilege wanted to willingly give up 
privilege. But there have also been great men who have seen, despite the privileges they have, they know that this is an unsustainable model. This cannot continue. So we have Gorbachev in Soviet Union. So we have the Clark in South Africa, who knew that this model is unsustainable. What Nigeria needs now is God to give us the leadership that knows that this is unsustainable. Now the model we are, the model we are on is unsustainable. We can sustain it when oil prices are high, when there is money for everybody to take home. But once the economy goes under stress, then the primordial sentiments will come out. So Nigeria needs on its own, just like General Bangida did when he came to power. He could have said, we will remain to appoint chairman of UBA, chairman of Union Bank, um, more Nigeria Airways, um, buy more ships for the Nigeria shipping line. But he willingly let go because he knew that it was an unsustainable model. I think we're in the state here now, states can't pay salaries, pensions are backlogging, um, issues of minimum wage cannot be met by almost how many states in Nigeria, they've got to have bailouts from the federal government to pay. The time is now for Nigeria to rethink itself. And I believe firmly that anybody who says that that rethinking is not necessary, that Nigeria is good as is, is only living in a fool's paradise. Because it means that the person either is of the privilege, either is of is benefiting from the madness that or is going on now, slumber. or is clearly <laughs> just not um, open to the challenges facing us as a nation. So I believe that the, the concept of nation building will have to continue far beyond our own time and generation. Every generation will be confronted with a new problem and new. Just 10 years ago, Americans woke up to Yes We Can and elected his first black president. Both blacks and whites across the divide thought that this is the end of race in America. Eight years after, race became another important <laughs> issue. Up to the day that after the Charlottesville um, crisis, the President of the United States could not say anything, could not criticize those who did it. Because the economy of the world, the movement of jobs out of America, the white privileged seeing themselves getting more and more unable to get what they used to get before, saw that race is another category that can be used. And it was used in the election. So we don't think that the Nigerian problem will end if we do all these things that we're all prescrib prescribing now. New and emerging problems will we still yet come. We just need to manage it. We need to keep at every point in time renewing and resetting ourselves. It has to be a continuous process. Because if it is not a continuous process, then it means that we have come to the end of time. It means that the <laughs> what will happen is that um, the next wave of issues that will come about in the country will be such that uh, the country will not be able to contain it. Now, now let, let, let's take a look at some of, of uh, the throw-ups from the uh, current uh, government. Uh, they have gone ahead to make a prescription, the, uh, declare the group IPOB, uh, terrorist organization. The governors in the southeast have collectively said uh, the group is proscribed. And the government has also added that the uh, fuel, the, the fuel, the, the energy on which this IPOB is being run is uh, the handiwork of some disgruntled politicians and those thieves who stole in the past who want to come back to. I mean, a federal government categorizing, uh, you know, uh, situations like that. Are politicians, are, are they... Are, are they incorrigible? Are they those who must fund the embers in order to get the benefit for themselves, as is being said by the, by the government? Well, I don't know what information the government have. Um, they have all the institutions of state. I don't know what information they have to arrive at that conclusion. But I just do know that a few years back, some of them were accused as being the sponsors of Boko Haram. I don't know if what they're saying now is that that was true because that the idea of, the, uh, of Boko Haram, the violence, the kidnap of the girls, were all orchestrated for politics. So it means that at the end of the day, all the discussions are just politics. Because if at this time that these issues are coming up, all you can do is to say they are being sponsored by disgruntled politicians. We've heard this word, disgruntled politicians, for a long time. We heard it during the UNCP days, during the Abacha years. We heard about disgruntled politicians. We heard it when the G38 met and decided to say to Abacha, it's time to go. We heard of disgruntled politicians. 
We had it during MKO Abiola's June 12th announcement. People talked about disgruntled politicians. So these disgruntled politicians need to be unmasked. It's an easy excuse. <laughs> it's a very easy excuse at every time in, 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 when issues are facing the country. I think we should move beyond that. I think the country has grown beyond the disgruntled elements um, um, narrative. We need to set a new narrative of saying, what is really the problem? All right. It's uh, People, Politics and Power of Africa Independent Television and the... Uh, we are interrogating all the issues regarding the IPOB crisis that will be proscribed by the Southeast governors, pronounced the terrorist risk organization by the army. So many of the questions pertain to whether these organs or group of uh, institutions, as, as they were, have the legal backing to make the pronouncements that they have, they have made. And I have in the House uh, the, a former minister, a former cabinet minister, uh, Osita. Chidoka, we are interrogating the process. When we come back from the break, we'll be taking a look at the solutions, the quick, maybe difficult paths we must go through to get Nigeria fixed out of this uh, uh, challenge that is available. Please stay with us. Don't go away. In times of crisis and conflicts, these are brother governors refuse to go into their ethnic focus. They run to the challenges of leadership. He declared copium. And that brought about a lot of sanity. We had a minor cracker in yours. Governor Lalo rose to the occasion in his trademark fashion, imposed copium, and before you know it, peace was again reigning on the plateau. We have a moral obligation the Niger Governor's Forum that uh, was heated a lot in the default of my experience in the midst of um, uh, East 35 years of my led by every led by government here gives me a sense of fulfillment that indeed there is hope for Nigeria. Uh, within the Governor's Forum, you hardly can determine uh, our political inclinations, you hardly can determine our religion, you hardly can determine where we come from. All of us have focused on how best we can assist the federal government. I introduced the idea of one Nigeria, one Nigeria. And what happened was that in 1938, I was explaining earlier on, it was the Lagos Youth Movement. So I appealed to my colleagues that uh, Lagos was all right. Yes, Lagos is the basis. Is the capital of the, is the capital of Nigeria, and uh, Lagos also is the homeland of many multilingual uh, groups in Nigeria. So that uh, Lagos should be in right. But what we wanted was to create a state of nationalism. So we should change it from Lagos Youth Movement to Nigerian Youth Movement. Nigeria of our dream. The Nigeria we need is the united, indissoluble, and cohesive Nigeria which guarantees equity, fairness, justice, and prosperity for its citizens. That is our focus on people, politics, and power. It is fresh, insightful, impactful. It's a must-watch. People, politics, and power on AIT. Join us to build bridges of unity. Thank you for remaining with us. We are back on the program, and uh, uh, Osita Chidoka is still with us. Now, let's quickly talk about the, the solutions. Of course, if you ask Nigerians to come together, all, all, if you have 20, 100 Nigerians to come together, they all have prescriptions <laughs> for what the, the problems, the solutions to the problems should be. Mm. How do we get out of this? Is there a quick a way out of it? Yes. The legal constitutional procedure should be followed. Who, 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 who initiates this? Now... Uh, the last time I got uh, uh, Usman, Dr. Usman Bogadjo on this program, who told me that the Southwest have spoken, the Southeast they have spoken, the South-South have spoken, the North, they will speak because they are meeting in October, and that they don't need the government. All the North needs to do after they have met is to take the document to the Southwest, to the Southeast, to the South-South, and say, look, as a people, what do we do? And they will reach a consensus and tell the government, this is what the people of Nigeria want. Is it as simple as that? 
I don't know. Um, Dr. Bugaje is a very bright mind, so I believe that he must have given some thought to that. But I believe that there are organs of state, there are institutions of state that can even be obstacles to this conversation. I mean, you heard the Southeast Governors Forum standing up and proscribing an organization. I, I share the, I sympathize with them because they needed to do something. But I think that um, they didn't have to go that far because it is beyond their limits um, legally to do that. But beyond that is that there are institutions of state. While this conversation is going on in October, in November, and December, those institutions of state should please follow the procedures of our law. If you want to declare an organization a terrorist organization, you have to go through the, plea, the process as enunciated in our laws. You have to go to a judge. You have to go, and the application has to be done by specific persons. He named three people that can do that application to the judge. And the judge has to be convinced of that process before you do that. And I was in this country when people opposed the labeling of Boko Haram as a terrorist organization. People opposed it. People now, 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 how do we get this, the, the talks beyond the, the IPOP being categorized, beyond the discussions, I mean, the challenges that the discussions are throwing up, and then the institutions we ought to talk about that they have a role to play, the National Assembly. National the, Assembly. The, the Constitution is a, big, is a big stumbling block to an easy access to... Uh, I mean, easy way out of the whole. You have to put the, put the constitution down because it's the ground law. Yes. And it's only the National Assembly that can amend it. Where do we go from from these discussions and all this agitation? Where do, how do we? Table? You know, for me, I think that we have to look at the specific events of the last two weeks. The National Assembly needs to reconvene. They need to do a public inquiry to why the military were dispatched to an operation in the southeast um, and what the constitution says about dispatching the military for such operation. Now, they also need to audit the activities of the military while they were there to ensure that they did it with the proper rules of engagement and also they respected the human rights of the people while they were doing it, of civilians, not, not necessarily that of the Southeast people. Now, after this auditing of these events of the last two weeks, then we need to go back again to the fundamental issues before us. Items for the amendment of our constitution has gone through. 2014, we went through a constitutional conference process. Yes. The whole country was a very tedious process. Some agreements were made. And the government needs to go back again. The National Assembly needs to take it up, rediscuss it among themselves like they are doing now, and go back and start the process of amending our constitution to reflect our current realities and the current balance of power in Nigeria. Anything short of that in the immediate term will continue to raise these issues of agitation. Because agitations don't thrive once the majority says, OK, I think we have a fair deal. What we have now is OK. If the majority goes to the middle, then the agitators become sidelined. One of the greatest misconceptions that has been in this country is that people are linking the agitation of Biafra to the present government in Nigeria. It is not true. That's always been there. The agitation for Biafra it was at its peak during General Obasanjo's time. He arrested Owazurike. He sent, he was, Rike was in detention. Masob was a major problem in Nigeria during Obasanjo's time, President Obasanjo's era. So the Biafran agitation did not start yesterday. Most of the accusations against Namdi about what he did in court, what he was charged in court, were things he said in 2014 and 2015 when President Jonathan was in office. IPOB was against President Jonathan. They were never in support of President Jonathan. So, what we need to know in this country is that at various times, we need to go back to make sure that the majority, the ordinary folks, people that want to go about their normal day business, will not have sympathies for agitations on any side. Now, you are contesting the elections in Anambra State. And uh, one of the reasons uh, I hear, I wouldn't know if it is confirmed, that the military want to quickly get the IPOB uh, to its base of non-effectiveness is... Uh, the fact that they, there's a promise that Anambra State will not have election and the IPOB say they will mobilize the people against Anambra elections. One of those things that the, the, the Nigerian state, the, the federal government says it's not palatable to hear, that you cannot have a group hold uh, the country to, to ransom. Mm -hmm. You are contesting the elections. And I have also heard some people say the UPP, the party on which you are flying, uh, the, the which you are flying the flag, has sympathy with IPOB. 
and that you have a lot of support from the young people who also believe in. Tell us what what is the nexus? Is there a nexus between you, the IPOB, and the the uh, the the, the, part, the your your political party? And how can we be sure that the elections uh, are held peacefully? Well, UPP has no affiliation whatsoever with IPOB. Um, we believe in Nigeria. We subscribe to the political process. We only say that the rights of individuals, of component parts of Nigeria to self-determination, should be reflected in our constitution, that people will have a process to go about it. We believe very firmly that the restructuring of Nigeria is critical to reflect the current realities in Nigeria. So we are not a separatist group, and we have no affiliation whatsoever with IPOB. Now, IPOB have said there will be no election in Anambra. UPP have said there will be election in Anambra because, because we, are, we, are this, we are a political party. We are participating, so we are not on the same page on that. But beyond that is the fact that we understand that the discussion about Nigeria, the IPOB is, is tapping into a latent mood in the southeast. But we are saying a void. that void, we are saying as UPP, we want to fill that void. We want our people to come into the political process. Elect leaders that can speak for you. Elect leaders that will reflect the feelings and aspirations of the people. And you seem to, be, you winning, feel, you seem, yes. you seem to be winning them to your side. That's the point. We want to tell them, don't go this way. Don't go to the streets. Come to the political process. Go to the elections and vote. Vote out those who have gone to the National Assembly and have not spoken for the four years they were there against the issues that concern you. Vote out any government are you, who has are you, are you not indirectly subsuming their, their own uh, aspirations, their agenda into your political uh, 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 what you, manifesto? Are you not indirectly taking on what they have? So this is a come in. You can actualize what you want under our platform. Yes. Are you not indirectly saying we identify with you we are with you, and we are the only one that can solve your problem. Yes, we are saying that. We are saying to them that we, the UPP, is a political. We are a political party. We are engaged in the political process. This is one clear route for the voice of the Ubos to be heard in Nigeria okay. loudly. Okay. If you engage in the political process, our voices will be heard, and it is important in any society that you allow the people, the majority. To be in the you don't want process. to pretend like the other political parties is, who don't that want then to. say there are no issues. There are no we issues. say there are issues here. Okay. And the same thing, we are going to take the same message across the country. Every part of the country that have issues, we are saying, we are listening to you. We will reflect your views when we form the majority in the National Assembly. It may look far-fetched. It may look difficult at this moment. But UPP is saying to all Nigerians that the discussion, the negotiation, the issue about restructuring our country to reflect the realities on ground is critical to the survival of our nation. And we're offering a platform to argue that at the national level. I think one, one, of, the, one of those quick uh, takes was that they, they saw you go to the prison to see uh, Nabi Kalu in, in, at the Koyi prison. Uh, Kuje prison. Kuje prison, I mean. Kuje prison in Abuja, you went to see him. And everybody said, uh, Sita Chidoka is uh, sympathetic to this, to this cause. Mm. Uh, 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 is it that you were sympathetic to the cause of, you, are not, you were able to go and see him in prison? He got bail? You were one of those instrumental to getting the bay for him. And he got out. He was flatting all the bay conditions. And all of you appear helpless. You couldn't tame him to tell him these conditions. All of us fought for you. I even came to the prison to come and see you. Please don't let us down because you must go by the conditions. Why was it possible for the Igbo leaders to hold uh, not the candle down to the bay conditions and tell him that, look, we fought for your freedom. We want you to get out of that place to... Continue with your agitation, but the manner you are doing it now is a violation. Why were you helpless in this matter? <laughs> we are not helpless. We are waiting for the, the court to take his to run his course. He's he, an adult. He knows the consequences of violating a court order. Did you speak with him? Yes, he knew the consequences. I mean, did you, I, did you call him? Did you speak with him? As a person, did you speak with him to tell him, these conditions, I understand them. I'm lettered. I understand. Yes. Even you are flouted. Did you speak with him? Yes. As he left the court, we agreed that the terms of the bail condition, if you don't feel good go about the bail condition, go and ask for a variation. That was our last conversation. I said, go and ask for a variation. Pending when you have a variation to those, you are bound to obey the conditions of the court. So he was obdurate. So he, he, if he decided as an adult not to obey the court, I knew that his date was coming, was coming back in court. And the court was going to exact his punishment. That is the process of the law. 
there was no way for me to go and enforce a court order. Or lock him up. Or lock him up in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so the court was going to take his due course. And that is the point. If the, and the, the government has already filed his applications about violation of the bail conditions, so he was bound to come to court. Were, were, you, dis were you disappointed? Did you think all your efforts, I mean, not you want to say your, all the efforts of all the leaders was to know that this uh, young man didn't value what you valued in going to be, uh, cry to everybody that, look, this young man should be released. Did you feel disappointed? Well, it is beyond just feeling disappointment. It is the fact that I think that many people have lost faith in government and institutions of state. It's a sad commentary for me that there are Nigerians who have lost faith in the institutions, in the institutions of, of state. Because for all I care, I don't think he minded that he was going back to the prison again. Because he was obvious that he had lost faith in the institutions, in the system. In yeah. the system. And that is the reason why UPP represents that strand to tell people, do not lose faith in this institution. Let's go in and reform it if there are issues with it. But without it, there will be anarchy. Are, so, they, are they listening to you, the UPP? Are they listening yes, the to you, the young people are listening. They're, they're, the young people listening? are listening. The number of people are listening. They are listening very strongly to that issue because they understand that we cannot say what is your grievance on the streets. So if our legislators have failed us, if our governors have failed us, we have one thing that we can use against them, the ballot. The, the, the ballot. Yes. Take over. So, take and over. And if I go there and I fail you, you know what to do. Remove me from office. So let, 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 me, let, let me ask you this. I know those who are listening will want to ask you. They will be interested to hear what you want to say. If you are elected governor of Anambra State, yes. how will you act? What, what will you be your attitude towards the agitation for the first sovereign state of Biafra? Now that we know you are asking them to come in that you can channel, help them channel their grievances. You can help them build a belief in themselves, believe in Nigeria, develop uh, consensus among themselves. What would be your attitude towards the agitation if you are governor of Anambra State? The first thing I would do as governor of Anambra State would be to remind all Igbos that our economy is bigger than our geography. And that being bigger than our geography, we want, the, we want what I would call the um, West African states to be formed, the union to be strengthened for us to have a wider market. Ibos are the most entrepreneurial part of Nigeria in terms of individual entrepreneurship. And the geography of Ibo so land cannot compare. The geography it. of Ibo land is such that we will need space for our trade and our economy and our energy. In fact, while we are busy discussing these local issues in Nigeria, Morocco is trying to sneak into the ECOWAS Union. Israel is uh, yes. knocking on the door. And ECOWAS is pushing. Meetings, yeah. Yes, and if Morocco enters, it means that the great importation that is going on in Morocco will be flooded into West Africa using the single market approach. So for us as Igbo people, we need to figure out who do we want to be in West Africa and who do we not want to be in West Africa. So why I'm saying this is that rebuilding our homeland, providing the infrastructure of tomorrow, engaging our young people in things that will expose them to working and earning money outside of Nigeria without leaving Nigeria, making sure that the IT infrastructure we put in place is such that their entrepreneurship will find expression. I believe that our view of Nigeria will be modified. The attitude we have, the sovereign state will be modified. Because our attitude will be to be looking at our economy, to the potentials of the untapped resources and market that is available to us. But that is because fundamentally what people feel is that despite the economic achievement, and once there is a feeling of powerlessness, once there is a feeling of a subdued identity, what you will get is what you are seeing today in the, in, 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 in the Southeast. And mm. I believe that I have the panacea to making the Southeast to review how it views itself and how we view our neighbors. And how it can play in the larger, in the larger, uh, market. In the larger market, rather than the geography of mm. the Southeast. Osita uh, Chidoka, uh, my guest on the program today, People, Politics and Power, where we examine Nigeria, promote its unity, and uh, talk about uh, justice, equity, and fair play. Uh, in a Nigeria where everybody will be happy under a peaceful environment. A nation where no man is oppressed. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the Thank program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining Thank us on the program. And that is our program. In the next 24 hours, we have another guest. We have another issue still surrounding on how to build a very peaceful, purposeful, unit, uh, united Nigeria that will uh, provide space for everybody to uh, thrive uh, progressively. Okay, I'm going to here. Thanks for staying with us.